name is Benny Gianni. I'm the president of SVI, which stands for Specialist Vehicle Innovation. The company was established in 2008 and uh, it's been running for over years now, designing vehicles and having other AMA solutions, both civilian and also in the security industry. We've got a range of vehicles, obviously starting from civilian, where we up armor vehicles from all sort of ranges, starting from a smaller vehicle like the NP you can see there, smaller bucky, to a BMW 750. The vehicle is called the Max 3. It is a lightweight uh, attack vehicle uh, that includes a mortar system, uh, and a remote weapon system. The mortar system is, uh, allows you to get on target within 15 seconds and allows you to throw bombs and move before the bombs even reach the ground again. The vehicle is fully designed by SVI in South Africa and will be produced in South Africa. This vehicle is based on a Toyota chassis, which makes it much easier for maintenance in Africa. The platform is very, very popular in Africa and space availability is easy and we see high availability of the vehicle um, in the African region. Okay, my name is Johan Small. I'm from SVI Systems and Solutions. So we specialize in level five system integration. So what we do is um, we've got agreements with a lot of OEMs who specializes in certain products like the motor, like re remote weapon stations, jammers, uh, action protection system, battle management computer, you know, the complete peripheral. So what we do is we not only offer a customer a vehicle, we tend to offer a customer a complete solution, a generic solution. In this scenario, what we have here, this is a fully automated system. So basically the idea here was because there's millions of types of motor systems in the world, like 80 millimeter, 82 millimeter to 60 mil, and this, unfortunately this is what this vehicle can handle. The, the idea is the customer's own motor pipes. We want him to use his own pipes, his own ammunition, his own logistic um, support activities. So what we do is we provide a platform with a computer and ballistic um, uh, for, with the ballistic capability, then what it's all about, the vehicle is, is in a configuration where you have a on, on the vehicle a mounted observer, so you can acquire your own target position, the position goes through to the commander computer, you run your ballistics basically, and the vehicle slaves automatically the weapon onto the target and you can throw the bombs. If you move on the vehicle, the barrel stays uh, on target, there's an INU inside, so obviously, as I said, fully uh, automated. You can also have a dismounted observer sending information to the vehicle um, so you don't have to have an observer on this vehicle. First of all, you might have seen this morning on the stand here, it's a very popular solution, especially for the African market. Okay? It's not a very expensive, although a very effective solution. The fact that we put it on a commercial type of vehicle, of which we now modify with an armored body, means that you've got, you, can, you can have this system with the local OEM for Toyota or Nissan or whoever to maintain the vehicle. You make the life for the customer easier. So it's really, it's, it's a, the opportunity for it is excellent. Good morning, it's wonderful to be here. My name is Sean Litka, I'm the Group Chief Executive of a company called Genesis Protection Services. Originally, 12 years ago, we formed Genesis Protection Services as a close protection company in order to be able to provide specialist protection services to high net worth individuals. And uh, failing on after that, what we did is we developed a series of support products. The support products themselves allow us to be able to offer some very, very specific protection equipment to governments whether they were military or police contractors in that environment. And in this space, we were able to develop what was a market requirement. The spalling capability is fantastic because of the ability to be able to retain a lot of the shrapnel that comes off from that. As you can see on a 100 round test plate shot with an AR-15. So this is firing 223 ammunition and it's doing it at 15 meters, it's high velocity, and the plate here took 100 rounds with zero impact. Which is wonderful if you're a military contractor or you're in an environment where you're dealing with AK-47s or other high caliber rounds, 
but the weight itself was a bit of a challenge. So we developed a soft armor plate and the soft armor plate gives us a 600 gram vest. So the, the individual plate itself only weighs 275 grams and you combine that with what we need and what it has is the ability to stop any level 3A threat. So any handgun threat up to a 44 Magnum. As you can see, which was evidenced here in the arms core test plate. What makes it unique on the soft armor is that it's ultra light, it's multi-head capable and we can mold it for specific applications but it's also very affordable. If you have a look at cost comparative in terms of Kevlar and other Kevlar composites generally the price point is significantly higher and on the steel specifically on those plates the weight is reasonable and it's affordable from a manufacturing perspective but it's also multi-head capable to the point of being able to take over 100 rounds in terms of that head. More than three times the price point in terms of comparative American products. My name is Adeo Gundei. I'm the Group Managing Director of Profos. And um, Profos is actually a defense service provider. We build armored vehicles, we build mine resistance, ambush, protected vehicles in Nigeria. And we've gone into building um, helmets and, and putting together helmets and vests, pro producing them in um, Nigeria. We are an OEM now. Okay, the, the compound vehicles we produce, we have the MRAPs, um, the level 3 MRAPs, mine resistant. They can resist uh, 10 kilogram mines. Then, of course, we have the police vehicles uh, that the Nigerian police and the police all over the world use now. The number of crew, it can take 10. It's a 10-man crew. It has a central tire inflation system. It has run flat tires, all the tires. And then when you look at the gun ports, it has about 12 gun ports all over the place. And then when you look at the glass, when you look at the glass, it's 90 mm thickness glass. And then when you look at the steel, the steel is a 75 mm thickness steel. When you look at um, the front of the vehicle, you can see it has a very wide windscreen. Then when you look at the vehicle itself, it, uh, because of the central tire inflation system, it can go on any terrain. You know what is happening with the Boko Haram in Nigeria. Uh, most of the vehicles they import from, from uh, most of these countries. The first problem they have, the first problem they have, they have the problem of overheating. We've taken care of this because the end users were all all um, involved in the design of the vehicle. So we've taken care of all those things. When you look at the underbelly, we've taken care of the underbelly because we now have a monocoque vehicle. The monocoque vehicle that will resist the, resist the 10 kilogram mine. And it's a very smooth running vehicle. It goes off-road, off-road 100 kilometers per hour, on-road maybe about 120 kilometers per hour. It is designed in Nigeria by Nigerians for the world. Yes, from scratch. And then it is, in, in fact, we have patented this particular vehicle. We have patented it for Profos, specially for Profos. The MRAP is actually, what we have is that we have axles from Axle Tech in France, independent axles in France, and um, we don't have a chassis in that case. We don't, it's a monocoque body. It's a monocoque body, and um, when you look at, even when you look at the suspensions too, we have, we have um, the suspensions from, from Axle Tech, then we have the Allison transmission line, we have the uh, ZF transfer case from, from ZF, com you know, so it's, it can do so much. Okay, so my name is George Hinolal. I'm the CEO of Reuters Communications. Our company's been in existence for 50 years. It's a South African company and we specialize in secure military tactical communications. In this current offering that you see here, we've now basically presenting a whole new range of radio communication needs for our South African Defense Force, National Defense Force. It's all the modernization requirements on the communication side. So there's various different types of products. We operate in different frequency ranges. So specifically, we have products that are in different forms from a man pack to a vehicle to a ground-based station. We also have them in different frequency ranges from HF, VHF to UHF. On top of that, we have, it's been ergonomically designed to have the same standardization in terms of how you operate. Once you teach the user to use the product, they can actually, actually operate all different products. 
It also has secure capability embedded in all these products. Therefore, you have total indigenization or autonomous of the secure capability. So it's pretty much an integrated system of communications. It's basically designed for basically short-range communication, medium-range communication, and long-range communications. And together with various types of products, we can have an integrated network of communication requirements in order to do data link, transfer of data, establish the short communications up to maybe two kilometers and the long range on HF up to tens of thousands of kilometers. Yes, yeah, so that is the Manpack version and that comes in three forms or in three frequency ranges. It's a Manpack version, which is in HF, VHF and UHF. As you can see, it's the same front panel as well. So this is pretty much what they call the short range communication systems. And what it is, is a very unique design. It's a, it's a handheld that has the ability to communicate to three radios, okay? It has three PDT functions, wherein you can have the soldier having the, 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 the device on, his, on, his, on himself, and through that he can wirelessly connect to other links like HF, VHF, and UHF. And when he's basically close to a vehicle, he can have a tether to the vehicle and still operate as an intercom system as well.